Yes, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So we will start with the introduction of Maryam Masood and Fatma Masood, and then I will give the mic for a brief introduction or maybe addition to that introduction to uh, Brother Masood, the father of Maryam Masood. And then inshallah, we are going to start our program, the Quran class with Maryam and Fatma Masood, inshallah. So I know Maryam for almost four or five years now. The first time I heard her, I heard her recitation in one of the local masjid in New Jersey. And I was so impressed that I desperately wanted to meet her father. So I actually eventually called Brother Masood and I met him and I said, what you did? Because I wanted to do the same thing with my kids, just for the inspiration. And then later on, mashallah, I had the honor that Maryam Masood was enrolled in my Arabic 101 class also, which I couldn't finish, so one of my students finished that class. I hope Maryam remember that. Um, and hopefully, inshallah, in future, Maryam can teach that Arabic 101, 102 and onwards, inshallah, to her students, inshallah. So, for more introduction, I will going to ask Brother Masood to come and introduce formally and then we will start our program, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Brother Asif. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I'm not going to uh, give a like, long description uh, or introduction uh, to Maria Masood. Uh, I think uh, many of you probably already saw some of her videos, right, uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but a couple of important points. Alhamdulillah, Maria, uh, she became Hafiza when she was nine year old. Uh, you know, right now she's in seventh grade uh, in Anur Academy uh, in New Jersey. Uh, we, we live in Somerset, New Jersey. And Alhamdulillah, she is involved uh, with many humanitarian organizations. That's one of her focus, right? Uh, she spent a lot of time uh, working with uh, Islamic Relief um, USA, right? And uh, they actually selected her as an ambassador uh, for Islamic Relief for the orphan kids of the world. So anywhere there is an event that involves like orphan in Syria or Yemen or anywhere, right? They invite Mariam to speak for them, right? So and, and especially in Central New York area and even like Pennsylvania and that area, Mariam always go and then um, you know, uh, you know, create awareness uh, why they should donate, why they should help these orphan kids across the globe, right? That's one of our, uh, you know, track. And the other aspects of Mariam's, uh, uh, you know, journey is she encourages uh, kids like your, like your age, right? Uh, you know, youngsters like around 10 year, 12 year, even five, six year kids all across the globe, and they uh, send every single day. We receive hundreds of messages, right, saying that uh, they listen to Mariam's recitation, and just because they encourage, now they is gonna start to memorize the entire Quran, and that's the kind of message we get every single day, and that is one of our motivation. So um, one other important point I'm gonna emphasize, and then I'm, I'm gonna hand over the mic to Mariam that um, everything we do is uh, only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have any other intention. Uh, we do everything for the sake of Allah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. That's why anywhere we go, we go completely free. We don't charge a single penny to anyone. Uh, and also, we, we, a lot of time we put like money from our own pocket for like, you know, cover expenses for travel and stuff. Uh, but the, at the end, like our goal is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of, I mean, some people think that, hey, we are trying to gain like uh, worldly benefits and worldly famous, uh, worldly fame and stuff. I mean, which is true, of course, uh, we, we want fame. Uh, fame. Uh, the only reason we want fame because unless Mariam is a famous person, nobody is going to invite her to talk in front of kids, uh, in, in front of the crowd, right? There are like probably millions of Hafiz uh, uh, or Hafiz in the world, but imagine, right? Unless a person become famous and well known to the people, they're not going to ask, and they they would they would not be able to create an impact on mass population unless they are famous. And that is the only reason we seek fame uh, in this world. Uh, but our eventual goal is is to through that fame we can encourage the mass population, mass youngsters, so that they can, they can encourage the uh, they they will be encouraged and motivated to memorize and learn the Quran uh, at the end. That, that's our goal. Uh, without further delay, I'll uh, let uh, Maria speak. I know that you are, uh, you know, you are waiting for that. Thank you, um, Abdul and Brother Asifirani, for the beautiful introduction. Okay. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يرطه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So I want to begin by thanking all, every single one of you for coming here. You know, my, my main purpose to come here was to meet all of you, and I'm really happy that I get to meet all of you. And of course, our only goal, like my father said, is to uh, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we came here for the sake of Allah, and also because I wanted to see all of my cute little friends and fans. <laughs> So, um, also I want to request all of you to make a dua from my parents. Behind the scenes, they are the ones who are always working very hard to motivate me and to keep, keep me guided and on this, um, you know, do everything correctly. They always help me and they prepare me before every event. And so I want to request all of you to make a special dua from my parents. And even myself, I will make dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the highest level of Jannah al Firdaus for all of their efforts and also forgive all of their sins. Amin. I also want to thank my beloved teacher and Imam Asif Hirani. All right. I want to thank Brother Asif Hirani. He was actually also my teacher, like he said. And um, I want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to come here to this noble, noble event and speak to all of these little children. Actually, Brother Asakarani taught me my first Arabic 101 class, like he mentioned before. So I'm very thankful for that. And are you all excited for today? I don't see any excitement. You all seem very sleepy. Maybe, are talk, you maybe talk about the geoparty class. Well, if I talk about the Jeopardy, then you guys will be more excited. So let me just tell you, at the end of the class, I have a fun game plan for you. Now are you excited? Yeah! There we go. Okay. So um, I'm going to be teaching you guys some, a little, like I'm just going to be highlighting some points of the tweet and a few other things. But I just want to mention that I myself, I'm a student, and I'm still learning as well. I take classes outside, um, I'm still taking classes right now with different teachers, local teachers. So if I make any mistakes, then please forgive me, because, you know, we are all learning, and this is like a learning stage. So I'm really excited to uh, tell you guys what I have planned. So she's going to recite. Uh, you want to start with her recitation? Okay. Just fine with him. So I want to introduce you to all to my baby sister Fatima. Fatima is four years old. Um, she she is right now. She is currently memorizing some surahs from the 30th juz, and she also does a lot of videos with me. You probably have seen her on some of my big videos. She's a really silly and funny baby, and very cute as well. And she's very intelligent and smart, mashallah. So today she will, wants to recite Sir Mutafifin to all of you to introduce the program. Hello, my cousin, my Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Thank you, Fatima, for your beautiful recitation. So, should I get started now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, don't go with the microphone. Come here, I'll take it off. Our recitation of the Holy Quran will be very fast and 
monotonous and it won't be beautiful. So since there's said we, we need to be able to make it really nice and beautiful. We need to recite correctly as well. We can't make any mistakes and perfect every letter. So do you all understand? Okay. Also, Tajweed is a very, very vast topic. If I'm, even myself, I'm still learning it. And so I'm not going to be able to cover the entire thing today. But you know, you just have to give an effort and try your best, and inshallah, you'll be able to learn. I'm just going to like highlight a few points about Tajweed. So why should you learn Tajweed? Does any, anybody have any guesses of why we should learn Tajweed? You can raise your hand if you have any guess. Why do you think that? Why do you think we should learn Tajweed? What's your name first? My name is Saber, and I think we should learn Tajweed because we might get more hasanat. This is the correct answer, and this is actually the first point. So, mashallah, great job! That is a very beautiful answer. And we actually have chocolate for all of you who answer questions. So maybe that will get you more inspired to answer questions. Yeah, just one second, madam. Let me open this so that you can give it to him. Okay. Okay. You, you can you can ask her. She will. You can come here. Ask them to sit and then say the name first. Okay. My name is Malika Patella, and the reason why we should learn Tajweed is because. Adding that beautiful tone will make sure we don't change the meaning of the suda. This is a very good answer. Thank you so much. Um, that is correct. So let me, um, should I take more answers or should I just explain them? Um, every, every topic you can ask a couple of folks to come forward and, and say, okay, and, and this chocolate. We bring this chocolate from back in the UFC. Okay, so uh, both of you answer. You, can, you guys can come take chocolate. All right. Um, should I, how many more people should I ask? Just around. So, uh, for each of your topic, uh, ask like a couple of folks to come. Like four or five. Or Altogether, maybe 10, 12, or maybe 15. Okay. All right. I'll take a few more, so you can come. Oh, uh, I'm at you, but okay. Well, that's okay. It's okay. You can come. You can come. What's your name? My name is Maria. Oh, you have the same name as me? Okay. Do you know the answer? Yeah. Tajweed. Why should we learn Tajweed? Is because Tajweed is a good learning thing, so we should learn Tajweed. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you so much for your beautiful answer. You're so cute, mashallah. My name is Rashid. And another reason why we should learn the Tajweed is because um, it's because it helps to pronounce it more better, and it helps to pronounce it more clearly. That is correct. Thank you for your amazing answer. Do you want this one or that one? You guys can choose. You can just come here and choose if you want. Which one you want? Take one. Anything that you want. I'll take this. Okay. Very good. All right. So I think I'm going to um, explain now why we should learn Tajweed. And um, I'll ask more questions in the future so you guys will all get a chance, inshallah. So all of your answers were correct. Thank you so much for your good answers, beautiful answers. So reciting the Quran without proper Tajweed is actually considered a sin if you don't try to fix it. So if you guys want to recite the Quran and you don't have perfect Tajweed, but you're trying your best to recite it perfectly, you're, you're actually going to get double the reward if you're struggling to fix it. But if you're ignorant and you're reciting the Qur'an and you're not even trying to fix your tajweed, then it is a, considered a sin if you don't try to fix your tajweed. So this is the reason why we should learn tajweed. And also, reciting the Qur'an with tajweed honors us in this world and the hereafter. We're going to get blessings in this world and in the hereafter as well, inshallah, if we read with the Qur'an with tajweed. If we recite the Qur'an with proper tajweed, it improves our recitation with perfection and melody. Now, I've mentioned this point a lot, and if we recite it with perfect tajweed, then our, our, the recitation of the Qur'an will become really beautiful. 
So without that tweet, our recitation will be very fast without any tuner style, and I've mentioned that one as well. But yeah, these are basically the points of why we should learn the tweet, and I'm sure there's a lot more points, but I just summarized a few of them. So um, the surah I chose to go over the tajweed with all of you is Surat al-Fatiha. The reason I chose Surat al-Fatiha is because all of you know already it's the opening, opening surah of the Qur'an. And also, we recite this surah so much in our lives, we actually recite it around 17 times a day, a minimum, minimum of 17 times a day, and even more if we, um, because you know Surah Fatiha, we have to do every single rakah of Salah, we have to start with Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is why it is very important to learn the perfect tajweed of Surah Al-Fatiha, so that every time we recite it, we can get many, many good deeds. So I'm just going to give a quick introduction to Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha is a Makki Surah. Does anybody know what a Makki Surah means? My name is Sheehan, and I think Surah to Mekia means the Surah came from Mecca. Yeah, that is correct. The Surah was revealed in Mecca. Um, if it's a Mecca Surah, the Surah was revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Mecca or before Hijra. And if it's a Madani Surah, that means it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, after he migrated to Medina. So Surah Al-Fatiha consists of seven verses. And Al-Fatiha, the word itself, it means the opening. It is not only the starting of the Qur'an, but it, it is also the starting of Salah, and I've mentioned that point before. And Surah Fatiha is not only a surah, it's also a very important dua. So um, if you remember, after, after reciting Surah Fatiha and Salah, everyone always says Ameen at the end. This is because it's a very important dua. So a uh, few different names of Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha has more than one name. So one of them is Umul Qur'an or Umul Kitab. This means the mother of the Qur'an or the mother of the book. Sabari Mathani, the seven often repeated verses. Alham, praises to Allah. as salah the prayer. As-Shifa, the cure. Al-Ruqya, the spiritual cure. Azaz al-Qur'an, the basis of the Qur'an. Okay, um, one of you can come up and tell me again what are the names of Surah Al-Fatiha. Not all of them, just a few of them, yeah. Great job. All of you are doing so good. I'm so proud of all of you. I'm impressed. 
Mashallah, Alhamdulillah. So okay. because she decided she wanted chocolate. All right. She deserved it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. No, not that one. She actually wants the other one. <laughs> sure. Take, take that one. Okay, so now let's move on. So in the Quran, there is a verse. Um, I think I had a type over here. It's actually not in Surah al nahu it's in Surah al hijr um, in verse 87. And the verse means, we have sent to you the seven often repeated verses. And I'll recite the verse as well. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> So basically, I'll say the meaning again. It means we have sent you the seven often repeated verses and the great Quran. And there is also a hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The chapter commencing with all praises and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of the world, is the mother of the Quran, the mother of the book, the seven often repeated verses, and the great Quran. This is a Tirmidhi Hadith. Okay, so that's the end of the introduction to Surah Al-Fatiha. Now, um, I'm going to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. After that, we all can do a chorus, and, and then we're going to go over just a few, the main, the Jewish rules of Surah Al-Fatiha. So, Maryam, after you um, provide the Tazbid rules, you can ask some of the kids to come there and decide, right? With okay. the proper Tazbid rules. Okay, all right. So, I'll recite first and then we all can recite together, okay? Quran 
It's called Haruf al Istarla, heavy letters, and there are seven heavy letters Kha, La, Qaf, Wa, Ghain, Ba, Sad, and sometimes Ra. So basically, heavy letters, you can, say to, you can take the meaning from its name. It means you have to pronounce it very heavily. And the rest of the Arabic letters are light letters, meaning you kind of don't pronounce it that hardly. So one of, one of the example, examples is Qal, Qaf. You can see I pronounced it very heavy. I said it like Qal. And Ra, I wrote occasionally because Ra is only heavy when it has a Fatha or a Dhamma. And if it has a Gasra, then it's light. So you guys could try to remember all of this because I'm going to ask questions. And some of this will be the Jeopardy as well, so just pay attention. So another uh, important that we do is called Mada'arid. So basically, this, this is when any of the Arabic vowels, meaning Alif, Wa'al, or Ya, are the second last letter of the word at the time of stopping, then you will have to stretch it or prolong it for two to six counts. So an example is Al-Fasad. And this example, you'll find it a lot in the Quran, this the tree rule. So you just basically, you kind of stretch on the Alif or the Wa'al or the Ya for two to six counts. So two, four, six, something like that. So um, if hard, this is another rule that we should all know. When noon sakina, meaning noon with sukun on the top, is followed by kha, ghaib, ha, ayn, hamza, or ha, you will read it as it is. So basically, it's hard. The word itself means clear. You're not going to say it any differently. We're bringing a whiteboard. Hmm? Whiteboard at the same time. Yeah, we're bringing it. So there is a whiteboard. You can wait and then maybe explain the ayah. Uh, okay. Inshallah. It is two go, I think. Maybe two chairs. We need two uh, chairs. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. There are two chairs. So, um, you can collect two chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's big. Yeah. Thank you very much. Is it high enough? Yeah, okay. You can, can see the board? Can, can you all see? You can? It would be good. Is it possible? No, it's not. Okay. I think that's okay. I mean, that's the best we can do. Is it a marker, Maria? Yeah, I have markers. She has markers. Oh, okay. Good. Or maybe, you know, do it this way. Yeah, that is going to be bigger. Actually, you can do this way and you can write on the top. Yes, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. It's okay, I think. Can, can you see the back? Can you see at the back? All the way? You can see? Oh, if you want to say it, please. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yep, it's perfect. Right, Maria? Oh, yeah. There you go. Perfect. You're going to be it. Yeah. <laughs> it's stable looking. You need to be a little bit careful. I think it's okay, it's still okay. we have the support at the back.
कौन रही थी Here in the middle, because then they can see. They, they cannot see. Oh, okay. I think she can. She says she can. She can skip it. That's fine. Yeah. She's, she's not tall because it may be like too much. Uh, oh, okay, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Sure. Okay. Well, that's not working out, so we're just going to talk about the videos. So I actually just already explained. Um, Three of them. There's just one more I want to talk about. This is a med lazim kalimi muzakal. This is one of the biggest med in the Holy Quran. So when the med is followed by shadda, meaning the when you kind of make it a double letter, that's called shadda. It will be prolonged six to eight counts, and this is the longest type of med. So an example is al halqa, and in Surah Al Fatiha, this is a ba. Med. We should all know this med. So I think these are some of the basic the three rules in Surah Al-Fatiha. I just want to ask a few of you to come up and recite Surah Al-Fatiha as well as you can. Okay. Um, Abu, can you choose? Because I don't know who to choose. Thank you. 
You can take a chocolate. All right. Maria, make sure you, you correct the major Tazid mistake because that's the idea of like asking them to come there after they said it. Okay. Jim, tell her. What's your name? Maria. Right? 
maybe uh, you know you do a cross kind of thing over there, right? I mean, they go I'll around. Set. I mean, I'll take like maybe five at a time, right? Okay, go go around uh, and go go there. So everybody get a chance. So everybody come stand here. Like you know, yeah. this hurt anyone? So you go around, uh, you know, some. So some of them side. come here. Yeah, yeah. Come go, here. Go ahead, go ahead. On the other side. Everybody stand here. Yeah, yeah. So now everybody. So you are here. You can stand here. You can come here. And it ask everyone's name, and then uh, you know. Yes. And then everybody speak loudly, okay? Yeah. Um, my name is Nakia. Is Rocky. Hello. All of you have really beautiful names, so now all together, let's use this for a Extends 
even farther than the, all the seats. <laughs> all right, uh, stand in the place. Get them around you, right? So, so that's the bigger. Around you, right? Come here. So there is a car? Okay, there is no car. Yeah, then you can come here. You can here. You can stand here. Then you can come in front right here. Perfect. All right, everybody. Ready? Go. Bismillah. picture we'll take a group picture at the end for, with everyone's uh, you know okay, so we'll take a group picture with all the children at the end and shout uh, everybody so you guys really loudly, yeah okay? just say loud because i can't give the microphone yeah, to all of you right. so that's all I have chocolate to eat. Everyone take one thing, okay? I think that's all we chocolate. Okay. 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 Okay.
All right, go ahead. One, two, three, go. Mariam, uh, say that, Mariam, at the end, everyone has a uh, gift. Can you declare that? Did you guys get? Did you guys get? Did you guys get? Sorry. Kids, you have to get one candy at most. Don't let me become Pakistani Imam Please. Jadakul, did you get candies? India? Okay, we'll arrange for you guys. All those who didn't get, we'll arrange for you, inshallah. And also say that everyone has gift at the end. So okay. everybody has goodie bags over here at the end. So it's okay if you didn't get chocolate. We'll try to get chocolate. Okay. Alright, so let's move on to the Jeopardy now. Are you excited? <laughs> I don't hear any excitement. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so um, um we need to make groups. Um, how do we make groups? Uh, I need Brother Kadir, your help, and uh, I need help a couple of volunteers to make the groups and stuff. Uh, do you think you need more than that? Yeah. Okay, so let's make a group. Okay, let's make a group. Okay, let's make a group. So, how do you make a group? I need a couple of volunteers. Can you help? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah.
Jaguar. Oh, I see the chicken. They are chicken rock stars. Polar bear? Polar bear. I'm polar bear. Okay. All right. Polar bear. Start it. So hold on, hold on. Before you start, this is a double check. Wait, this is a big one. Okay. Everybody, please, silence. Silence, please. Okay. This is group orange. That is group strawberry. This is group banana. No. This is orange. Elephant. Elephant. Sorry. That's group fox. And this is group polar bear. Okay. Okay, starting with orange, which one do you guys want to do? Choose one from here. So we have the Dweet Rules, One, Thriving Knowledge, Random Fun, Prophets and Sahabas, Basic Islamic Knowledge, and the Dweet Rules Cartoon. Quranic Knowledge. Quranic Knowledge, 500? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Oh, no, I know.
us move. No, follow up us. Or you want to give partial points? I'll give partial points for that because it's half right. Okay, it wins.
You guys are tired now. Can we the rules for two? We are totally good fun. Is it all the way to your where they have guests up? Can we go to the light? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Everybody will get money back. 